Endeavour Television uh, made The Games of Fear and you were the producer and I was a line producer and that was 73 we set it up, yeah. 74 we shot it. Um, and I'm sure it was the first independent drama production. It, yeah, it was. Yeah. For, you know, BCNZ used to, now TVNZ, they used to do everything themselves. Yeah. And it was the first one that was put out to the private sector. So we were kind of pioneers. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it was set during the gold mining era, and it was a children's program, really. It followed a young boy through who was looking for his father in the gold fields. And there were all sorts of villains involved and different people. Elena Rogers was the hotel keeper and so on. They had a wonderful cast. Like people from all over the place came. Almost every known actor in New Zealand at the time had a bit part on Hunter's Gold. And was shot up in the mountains where I now live. Some of it down on the beach of the river here but most of it up in the mountains. What did people think at the time about the future of an industry? Roger Donaldson kicked the whole feature industry into gear. I and mean, he's an amazing guy. And with sleeping dogs. And after that, the Film Commission was formed. And then the Film Commission started to finance films as they could and as good scripts turned up and so on. Sons for the Turn Home We Did in Samoa, I think, was one of their first. Um, there were gap, big gaps between films. It got to the stage of maybe the three a year and so on. It, it still employed very few people. Yeah. So, it was tough going. Didn't pay much. <laughs> Paul Monda, director. John O'Shea, originally the producer, I think he, he pulled out because we didn't always agree with Paul, but um, it was an amazing experience for me. A very small crew, very little money, and absolutely wonderful people, you know, someone to work with, they just, <coughs> they say that the Maoris were the warriors and they were the lovers. <laughs> they are, are very loving people you know, and very generous and that was pretty amazing. And I used to have a cab driver that drove me from Apia where we were staying across to the south side of the island every day. And he would teach me, he was a Matai, he was a chief at Samoa. He'd teach me some Matai language. So every morning I had to have a carver ceremony with the local Matai. And I'd practice my Matai language with them and so on. The young director, David Blythe, had just made a film called Angel Mine, I think. And it was a pretty bizarre film, but quite clever. And he got hold of a woman of good character script from Liz Gowan, I think it was, um, a writer in the UK. And he brought it to me and asked me if I'd produce it. So I said, sure, and off we went. It was very successful, except it was really hard to sell because it was a one hour drama and people with a one hour time slot want a series. Well, they've got to fill that slot with a similar genre of film. So I was advised to make it longer and I could go out as a feature for the television market for cable and so on. So I came back and shot another half hour and added that to it, recut it, and, and that was Fran Walsh's first ever writing job.
having done the games a few and hundreds of goals and so on, I really like the idea of making programs for the family and or for children. So I developed a lot of ideas and at one time I was trying to put together, I asked, went to Cannes in France and was I put up on, on the notice board that I was looking for a co-production partner. And I came in contact with Atlantis Films, which is now Alliance Atlantis. And we tried to develop a series t together that could be shot in Canada and in New Zealand. And then I tried to sell that series on paper. And somebody said, well, why don't you grab something that already exists, is known, or whatever. And Wurzel Gummidge was an enormously successful family show, children's show. And it had stopped production. South Pacific, not South Pacific, I beg your pardon. Uh, Southern Television uh, were producing it. Yeah, the UK company. The UK company. And they lost their license to broadcast. So I purchased the rights to the series, Whistle Comics. They'd made 27 episodes. And I purchased the rights, bought the story out here, and bought two of the original writers from the UK out. Took on Fran Walsh to help deal with the New Zealand side of the situation. And then decided to proceed with her on her own. Uh, she was a great, great writer. She just had a marvellous talent for picking the right accents and storylines. And, and she did a lot of, most of the casting for me as well. So she worked on Wesley Gummidge for about three years. Did she bring some other people along with oh, her? She brought Peter Jackson on to the shoot. Uh, she asked me, Peter just made a film of his own, Bad Taste. It hadn't been finished yet. And he wanted to get some work on a, what he called a real film set with some real filmmakers and so on. And we weren't all that real at the time. But anyway, I took him on board and he did special effects for us. And then he and Fran subsequently married and Lord of the Rings, the rest is history. <laughs> Somebody asked me once why I worked in the film industry. And I said it's because I can't think of anything harder to do. Hmm. Like you're, you're working with every discipline. Like you've got writers, creative people, you've got actors, creative people, often lost in their own character. They don't know who they are because they've always been playing somebody else. And they can be difficult characters. And then you've got crews and you've got every kind of trade, builders and carpenters and designers and set dressers and camera people and sound people. And you've got to understand all their crafts. Because I'm one of these people, <laughs> I will never ask anybody to do anything that I won't do myself. So I've shot some of the films, I've recorded stuff, I've built the sets, I've done, I've done almost every job. To, I have a dangerously small knowledge of many things. <laughs> so, and that's what helped me put films together, really. It's just this broad, not knowledge, I wouldn't say broad knowledge, just the broad appreciation of all the different crafts.